Drew York Show, live from an undisclosed location, I guess you could say. Uh, my special guest today is uh, singer-songwriter Julian Thomas. Please come and sit down. <laughs> Thank you for doing this today, man. Hello. So you told me you were out last night. Oh, my God, yeah, bro. I'm in rough <laughs> shape right now. <clears throat> That's what it is, though. Eh? Um, maybe we should start... Um, you mind if I light up? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know uh, a good place to start probably is... Um, how did your like relationship with music start? Like I know everybody has like a different story. Like you know, like from young usually, like there's like their parents usually have like an extra sort of influence on them. Or, um, what was your like earliest introduction you think to music? Um, like the first memory I'd say I have is probably um, like being in diapers and dancing around like the living room that in the apartment that I grew up in, like listening to like fucking. Stevie Wonder and Michael Jackson and uh, you know my mom played like ABBA um, and then my pops would listen to like Rush, um, Black Sabbath, like Pink Floyd um, and then like later on you know what I mean so like both sides of the spectrum duality is like fucking Where was key that? for me. Uh, what do you mean? When you grew up? Where uh, in the West End. So okay, yeah cool. I grew up, grew up born in Rexdale and then grew up like in Etobicoke. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you remember when you first started making music? Was that like something you did when you were young? Yeah, like the first, um, I think like the first like bars I ever wrote or song I ever wrote was when I was like nine or 10. Um, and I was just writing cause like, I don't know, it was a way for me to like get shit off my chest and kind of like write about like what was going on in my life at that time. And I was like, it honestly just kind of ended up starting to rhyme. So I was like, okay, let me run with this. So, you know. What kind of music was, like, inspiring you to write music back then? Uh, was it was some of your parents' stuff sticking with you, or was it you have your own style? Definitely you know? at that point, like, I was into hip-hop. So, like, I learned about, like, Pac and Biggie, and, um, like, Eminem was obviously heavy back then. That was, like, where I started to, like, learn how to, like, structure bars, I guess. Yeah, so listening to a lot of rap definitely helped me become a rapper, you know? But I feel like having like a general love for music is not only going to help me now, but it'll help me in the future as well. So. Do you remember when you uh, first liked your own music? Like remember when you first started sounding good or like you thought that you sounded like, no, okay, that's not, hey, that's oh not bad. God, that's, that's a good question. You know? Cause like I battled with that for a long time. Um, I want to say like, I didn't like, um, anything I really worked on like I, I liked it like obviously it was honest it came from the heart but um like the track that me and Francis put out I think it's called it's like a snippet of the song called Screwface that me and Francis worked on the first half was like fire so we just kind of ran with the first half and made it a snippet but it's called um 03-24-16 that one's on SoundCloud and oh, I um heard that. yeah so that was like the first time I heard my voice and I was like okay that's how I'm supposed to sound like this is what I've been waiting for, you know, mm -hmm. like now, now it's finally starting to transcend. So that was like definitely in my mind, like um, it stuck out for me. It's like that, like finding your voice. Mm -hmm. like, cliche. That was when you were, and like, I was like, like, oh, oh shit, that's, that's me. What I'm supposed to sound like. That's me now. Yeah. So that was like for sure um, the moment when I was like comfortable with how I sounded and like what I was portraying. You know, um, how did that relationship start? You and um, Francis Scott Heat. Um, so we met at Remix Project. Um, oh, you were yeah, yeah, yeah. Word. So we were in what, what year was that? I want to say 2011. <coughs> um, and we were in the same round. So like, I had some tracks that I played him and like some of our OGs from the program kind of just like lumped us together because they figured like, yo, these guys can create. Um, and I had like kind of a production background so I knew how to like communicate some type of like what I wanted in the song so me and him just kind of like started working at remix and then you know after five years is like when we finally put a track out and like it was fun just development that's like fine. exactly exactly over time like we just worked from a condo essentially like down by the remix project where me and my manager were living um and we were just like you know do the same 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 old two-step and you know, find a sample or start from the ground up. And then like, we would just record songs that we were, we didn't know if we were ever gonna show the world that 
these these songs, but we're starting to, you know. I was talking to uh, Drea. Shout out to Drea. Yeah, shout um, out to Drea. I love you. She was saying that you started exploring production on your own too. That that's been like a focus recently. Whereas yeah. like you were working with a bunch of collaborators in the last little while, but recently you've been like focusing on yeah. your own production. Yeah. Um, what's um, that been like? That process. Cause um, I used to produce when I was like 15. I used to use Fruity Loops. Um, mm -hmm. And then I picked up Ableton. Like some of the guys who I live with here, like um, put me onto Ableton. And I learned more on Ableton in like four months than I did in like 10 years on Fruity Loops. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? Like it actually is possible for me to produce. I just have to find like my formula. So now I'm working on my formula essentially. And you know, I'm, I'm always like collaborating with with other artists and other producers and stuff, so it's a pretty interesting time right now. Um, she also told me, oh, that, that she told me this, but also uh, John, the, John the Barber. John he the told Barber, me my that, guy. Um, you like you're sick with ball, like that. You're, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You got like a nasty shot. Yeah, yeah. My jumper is like <laughs> super, super on point. Um, I used to be able to get up like fucking right up to the rim and. Uh, yeah, my, my hoop dream's deflated, um, but I think about it literally every day, bro. Every How, day. When was that a part of your life? Like, was it you, you were younger? From when I was a kid up until I was about, like, 19. And then... Do you play, like, school ball, too? Yeah, yeah, I played every every year at uh, high school. Same word. So, yeah, that was cool. And then I didn't do any post-secondary, but I feel like if I did, I probably would have ended up playing ball. Huh. Mm. What what stopped like what got in the way? Was it music that got in the way, or was it something else that sort of like distracted you? Away from uh, I went to like one orientation at York because I got into York for I think like kinesiology, and then um, I was like, "Yo, fuck this shit!" <laughs> like straight up, give me my money back right now, type of thing. And uh, it was uh, they, it was a long process like to to withdraw from it, and yeah. it was a long process to get in. But honestly, I knew like sitting in that three hour orientation, I was like antsy i was like high and shit and i was like yo this i'm not gonna fucking be able to do this shit like i already spent like the last however long in the classroom i know i'm not gonna be able to yeah. you know so i just pursued pursued the music you know was that before remix that was before remix yeah, yeah. so maybe that that's kind of what pushed you to finding something like that exactly that you were, like i needed something for... some form of structure yeah. Like, I'm that way. I need I need to be taught. Like I'm a very like auditory learner. As much as I'm like a visual learner too, I need to be like I need someone to like teach me. I can't. One hundred percent. I'm not a big like teach myself person. Like, yeah. As much as I would like to be, I know some people that can just lock in for like eight hours. Well, yeah, because themselves, but like I I do need to kind of be taught. I think that's like a thing nowadays. Like you gotta like find it yourself. You know what I mean? And you have to be kind of willing to fight for it. Um, because we're in an era now where everything is so like readily available, like there's a lot of shit you have to sift through as well, right? So, I mean, finding those hidden gems and stuff t to like get where you need to go is like, that's like a hidden art at this point, to me at least, mm. you know? Yeah. Could you maybe tell me a little bit about Remix and like the, the importance of that and the effect that that had on you? Man, that's what just pushed me in a different direction than I was going in. Um, like, even my mom said last week, she's like, how the hell did you fucking make it past 20 years old? <laughs> and I was like, I, don't, I have no idea, mom. Like, straight up. Um, I didn't really plan, you know, but then I got into Remix. I had heard about Remix prior to that, but I didn't think I'd make a move with music. So I was like, you know, let me, let me go back and try and find that structure now. And then I applied, and um, it's a it's a a long kind of funny story how I got in but I ended up getting in and uh I met like Gavin Shepard and Gav shout out to Gav um like put me under his wing and really just kind of like said yo like you can do this music shit you know um and shout out to everyone at Remix Project like that's the family till the day I die for real um yeah I don't know I don't know uh <clears throat> where the music would be if I uh if I didn't go to remix, like probably very one-dimensional trap artist. At, if I didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah, you feel like it just expanded your mind and like the 100%. expanded like the, the direction your thinking was going. Yeah, thousand percent. 
were you able to learn like some of the business side too when you were in like remix or like in, maybe not like directly but sort of being around that space and being around those people like definitely being put on certain game like how to move differently and how to like release and how to like present yourself that kind of yeah stuff. and that's like one thing i can say like is like i was going into with the ogs and like dropping gems and stuff like that earlier um they really do care enough to to drop the gem on you and like be like um just to point you in the right direction you know and i mean a lot of kids a lot of kids who go into the remix project really need that you know and there's a lot of kids who apply so it, it's um it's a big thing to to come out of the program especially to come out of the program like with success and some some movement you know what i mean um yeah i, I don't know i kind of drifted from where the question well, was good where, yeah um, I was going to ask you about collaboration a bit. I, Drea was telling me that I should ask you about um, the song No Better. Yeah. With uh, Junior T and uh, Milo yeah. and uh, Sean. Sean, yeah. Shout out to Sean. Shout out to Milo. Shout out to Junes. Love. That's the family still. Um, um, yeah, tell me about how, like, how that happened. Like, cause th Was that your first time you'd been to LA? That Was that your first trip? Or was that, that was like the another? first and only time I've ever been to oh, LA. Okay. Yeah, so like, I went out there. I was supposed to record there for three weeks. I mean, for a week, and then I ended up extending my stay for, like, three, because I got, like, an album done, and then I'm like, yo, I'm like, I could get another album done while I'm out here, so, like, why not just record yeah. the music? And that was a track that we ended up all collaborating on out there. I was actually mad sick in L.A., um, so they, like, worked on the track, and I was like, yo, I got to take, like, a nap, and that nap turned into, like, a six-hour nap. I came back, and then we started working on the track, and No Better is a bop, for real, like, yeah, that's such. That's a, it's so interesting how well that song's done too. Like, it's like how well streaming numbers are looking on that mm -hmm. song, and it's just based on just independent promotion between yep. like all four of you. You know, mm -hmm. that's so interesting. Just a push, just a push from good people who care about like some good music. You know. Yeah. Um, maybe you could tell somebody maybe who's watching this is like an, maybe an artist or somebody who's like kind of pushed themselves a little bit further. I mean, yeah. maybe talk about the importance of like booking a train t or booking a plane ticket. Yeah. And like just like getting yourself out there. Like Honestly, it's so important. Like, I'm a guy who's really rarely like left the city, um, but in leaving the city, I found how important it was. Like, I found out more about myself going to a different place than I knew about myself. Just like than I would have known about myself just staying here. Um, and like, yeah, you you never really know yourself until you like go out and see the world. So like, truthfully, I don't even know if I know myself yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I've if this is all I've seen, like, like, and I, there's more to see, like, what else, like, what type of monster could I become? Yeah. You know. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, it's like, yeah, you 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 think of yourself like sort of in this one environment, and then you put yourself in a totally new environment, and it's just like you things you thought were true maybe aren't as true, or things that you assumed about yourself. Exactly. You know, I always thought that I was into this, or I always thought that I felt this way about that. And yeah. Then, you put yourself in a whole new environment and people are moving differently, talking differently. Yep. And you're like, is this, did I only know this one thing? Like, did yeah, I only yeah. know this one way? Yeah, yeah, like, was I that one track minded? You know? I mean, and it's 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 a positive thing, right, to realize that. And with you, like, it's going to affect the music. It's going to, like, completely change, like, the way you're approaching it, right? Yeah, but I, you know what, though, at the end of the day, like, I feel like the music's always going to, like, come back to me just being, like, this young bull who's like just kind of mad and hungry, you know? That's like the root of it. Like I've always just like from the day I was born, I was just kind of like an angry kid with a cause in the world, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I like that, it's good. Um, I was gonna ask you about um, the two songs that you would just put out. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about the cover first, the art on those. Where did that come from? Uh, that's my homie TG. And so he's done pretty much all the the artwork for all of my music. And um, that's just like uh, the project I Can't Trust It is like, it's not necessarily me being like, yo, I can't trust that person, bro. Like, or I can't trust that bitch. Like, no, it's like me being like, yo, I sometimes I can't even trust my own heart in certain situations, you know, and I need to trust my mind more and and think of shit from like a more logical standpoint um dating back to even just like see i mean like going back to even just seeing shit from 
like a 360 degree view and trying to see things from everyone's angle um but you can also get lost in that so um that project is me kind of like exploring the duality of my like my love and hate um for like the industry in general and for for a whole bunch of things that is just going on in my life right now so it kind of um, serves as like an introduction for some people too maybe yeah and i think a lot of people don't even know that it was like two songs which is crazy um <laughs> yeah there's two songs it's uh time on their hands and so long so yeah there's two tracks i love um i love time on your hands and that's such a fantastic song thank you bro um, thank you I, can you tell me about those like opening bars like because it's, it seems like you're like describing things you know it's like what what's from chinatown what's the blank t yeah yeah blank t that's from chinatown what is that just a plain white tea. Oh, like tea. <laughs> like a tea. <coughs> yeah. I'm picturing like tea. Like some like, tea, yeah. I'm like, what are you talking no, about? No, I know. Blank tea that's from Chinatown. That's know. so you. That's so yeah, funny. Yeah. Blank tea that's from Chinatown. Mm, stanky that moved by the pound. It's, you know, uh, it's it kind of just explains itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, I want to ask you about the show. Yeah. Um, you told me right before you went on, you said that that was your second show you'd ever done. No, uh, in Toronto. Um, in Toronto. Oh. So yeah, I've done, I've performed a little bit. Um, I've performed a little bit, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, no, that was like the first like big thing I've ever done in terms of like shows in Toronto. So that was like cool. But I've I've been performing since I was like 15 here and there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. My first show was in um, Niagara Falls actually. My homegirl Taryn's house. Shout out Taryn. Love you too. Niagara Falls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was dope actually. Like house party, like insane. Different vibe than like the mod club. <laughs> a thousand percent. But mod club was like a different story, man. Like that was like for me such a cinematic moment in my life. Like I'm gonna look back at that and be like, okay, like I hope if there's ever like some type of movie or anything that I can do, like that's definitely gonna be a moment in the in the movie. Cause like I don't know, like, just the whole thing, like, from the beat, like, the opening scene, I guess, is, like, um, I'm sitting on the couch in the green room, and they're, like, yo, you're supposed to be on stage, and I was, like, what? <laughs> like, what the fuck? And then I, that happen? Yeah, and then I ran on stage, and I was, like, <laughs> shit, like, I was supposed to be performing, like, I was, like, six minutes into the set. That was sick. That was a good performance. I like that. I like, I like that Crinny was DJing. I think that was sick. Like, I think that it's, like. Thank you. It's, like, the, it's, like, natural evolution, right? Yeah. Yeah, me and Crinny are working on some music. Shout out Crinny, man. Straight up. Like, shout out Crinny. My dog. You um, already know. Yeah, that show was so cool. Shout out to Langston Francis. That was like a... Yo. That was such a cool moment. Yo. That show was amazing. Shout out to Langston for real, man. Like, brother, you killed that shit. Straight up. Hard act to... Hard act to... <coughs> to open for, man. <coughs> you know, like, when I was in there watching his... Uh, uh, sound check. I was like, man, this kid's a star, bro. Like he is, <laughs> yeah, undoubtedly, you know. So. Nah, he's definitely got something. Yeah, yeah, he knows what's up. Yeah. He knows what's up, and he's young, and he's just mature, you know. So he knows what's up. I like the look you had going at that show, like the like white tee, like but tucked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, you're like hair down. That was sick. It's Thank like, you. Such a good man. like like rock star look, but like your music isn't like that, so it's like such a good contrast. Yeah, like yeah. That. Mm -hmm. That's you know, I was talking like sort of industry people at the back of the were kind of just like looking from the back, like you know, like booking agent type people. They're looking and they're like, "Oh, that's like a really good, interesting look. Like that really, that really works." You want to know where that actually came from? Um, <coughs> so like, throughout school, like being in like a choir or a band and shit, like you're required to wear like black pants and like a white dress shirt. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, <coughs> "How can I like?" How can I like make this outfit just seem more like me nowadays? You know, I played clarinet in middle school and I was in the choir for a little bit too. Um, so that like stuck in my mind. I was like, you know what? Like I've been on stage and performed before, and I had to wear this, and mm. it like it caught people's attention. So I'm just gonna go with this right now. Um, so thank you for noticing. Um, but yeah, for like a plain ass outfit, I made that shit work, man. Thank you. 
No, I, see. <laughs> I like that. I guess yeah. it's, it works. Like it's mm-hmm. uh, it's like yeah, kind of like a uniform, mm-hmm. but like it's a little more laid back. Yep. And then you know I tucked the shirt in because I was like, fuck, I I missed that. I missed that whole style of like tucking shit in and you know like '90s kind of fucking drug dealer shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't want to. Like, I don't want you to like reveal anything because I know like that next year, like I'm sure you want to do a lot of things on your own term. Mm-hmm. Maybe like describe what the next like year or so look because we're kind of reaching the end of the year now. Yeah. Um, <coughs> we're starting to get into those like New Year's resolution <coughs> type moods or like thinking about like, oh, I'm gonna take over blah blah, blah all this like bullshit. Um, yeah, yo, new what, year, what new me, see, fam. What do you see it looking like you know, um, next year? Because like this is kind of where you sort of set people up right now. You kind of set people up with like a a one two song right now, you know, just kinda like tie people over. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm anticipating that there's like you got like something else coming that you've got to like Yeah, I'm like setting people up for. Um I feel like honestly, like without sounding like a shithead, like I'm kinda pushing Tupac numbers with the unreleased songs now. So like I can't wait to just flood flood the streets and drop this shit because there's more than a few projects that I could put out at any given moment. Yeah, I guess the key is that it's that, that curation, that, that release, like make sure that it's like the right songs at the right time. That's why. That's completely wise. Like I have to, I have to make sure that it's like organized in a manner where it's as cinematic for people to listen to as it was for me to live. Mm. You know what I mean? So we that's have why like it takes like time. A good support system around you, like a quite like a good community of people that really. I mean, the, the more that kept people, I kept asking about. Telling people I was gonna do this today, mm-hmm. and sort of asking them like, "Oh, like you know, what should I ask them?" And they're just like, "Man, like Julian's got it, man. Like Julian can hold a note, like you know, like Julian's like, you know, he do- he doesn't act like it, but he can blah blah, blah all this stuff." It's yeah, like, yeah. It seems like people like really believe in you. You know, that's crazy. And thank you guys for believing in me, because <laughs> I don't believe in myself. So thank everyone for fucking believing in me, straight up. Does the music kind of help? help that like believing yourself or does it kind of like yeah that's where i'm confident that's definitely where i'm like 100 percent confident yeah and then i'm like 99 percent not confident in real life you know but that's where i can like be who i need to be yeah i mean it sounds like you've that's something you've been like passionate about for a long time so like it seems like once you're finally up there and people are receiving it that's like what you've been looking for is for people to receive what you're i just want connectivity bro Connectivity, engagement, you know? Not in like that, I don't mean engagement in like that weird like social media. Yeah. I mean like human interaction, you know? We got away from that and it's fucking us up. Yeah, it's like even like at your show, like just being able to talk to people. Oh man, that's so cool, bro. People that, gen- people that, you know, maybe not even, they don't even, maybe they don't even know you because Julian, maybe they just know yeah. you because of your music. Yeah, yeah. Being able just to have those kind of conversations. Yeah, bro. That shit is amazing. Connecting with people on a personal level, you know? I think it'd be cool to perform, like, uh, like to the crowd on a, on the same level. Mm. I would want, I would want to do that, like, those perform like old, in like, the crowd. Those, like, old, like, shitty bar situations yeah, yeah, where yeah. you're, like, literally, like, on, like, there's, like, no platform. Yeah, no I like stage. that. It's just, like, I on like the ground. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that, man. Intimate. That's dope. Sick. Yeah, um, the last thing I usually ask people is uh, to, like, give off, like, name, like, two good food spots. Like, one for, maybe one for people that live in Toronto that wouldn't know about it. And then one for people that maybe are coming into Toronto that wouldn't know anything. They need like a general, like an easy, getting easy into it, you know? Like, so like start with like the, the real, the real spot and then the little spot maybe like for newcomers. Okay. So, um, <coughs> <coughs> newcomers, I would say, um, check out Sugo. So that's like Lansdowne mm-hmm. and Bloor area. And then, you know, if you're like, a, if you've been around Toronto, like, I'm a fucking pizza head. So for me, like, the best pizza is um, Batando's, mm. which is right yeah. by, like, um, College of Manning, I think. Yeah, just south of there. Amazing. Fire. I love that place, bro. I go in there and scoop up a whole ready-to-go pizza <laughs> at once. Like, yeah. So those are two spots for sure. But, yeah, that's just, like, part of the Italian heritage just showing through. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sick. Yeah. Okay. Thanks love, so much, bro. man. Thank you for doing Mad this. Mad love.
Okay. Appreciate you, bro. Drew York Show. Thank you for watching. I will uh, see you next time.